Words can't describe the emotions Juanita Inguiano has experienced since learning her 24-year-old son was missing somewhere in Iraq. So the single mother, a teacher's aide, points to the ceiling Fanny installed in her small living room. She points to the pinstripe couches, the tennis bracelet still in its red velvet case, and the Martha Stewart patio furniture, all gifts from her firstborn and only son, her handyman, the man of her house. At the time that I wrote the story about Juanita Anguiano and her son, I was covering the uh, South Texas for the San Antonio Express News. The war had just started. It was March of 2003, but we had started writing about soldiers that were coming back in caskets. And the valley, it's a very poor region of South Texas, and a lot of young men and women had joined the military. I had heard about this one soldier in Los Fresnos who was missing. I, I told the photographer, I said, you know, we should really try and go find this family because her son is missing in Iraq. You know, we, we need to put it on record that there is a mother still waiting for news of her son. And a lot of the people that I choose to write about, no one ever writes about. So I take that responsibility extra seriously because I feel like this may be the only record of their lives. Juanita, I can't imagine as a mother what you've been going through the last month. Can you just share with us what it's been like for you? Well, <clears throat> my whole family is going right now through a hard time. And uh, uh, it's, it's very hard for all of us. I was actually supposed to be gone on another story, but they did not have anything for the front page for a weekend. And they knew early in the week that they wouldn't have anything for the front page to offer. The national section wouldn't. So they begged and pleaded with me to turn that story around in a matter of days, I think. There's something about journalism that involves instant gratification. You know, I wrote my story last night. It appears on the front page all over the place. And it's gone and it disappears by the next day. You're constantly chasing this high. Our desk editors were reviewing all of the different wire stories, particularly about the war in Iraq that night. And it was drawn to uh, Dan's attention of here's this story from the New York Times, and it looks like Macarena's story. We had a editor who oversees Macarena's work, and he did the old yellow marker comparison. And it was remarkable. I mean, there were some indefinite articles changed and here and there a verb conjugation, but it was literally word for word the same story. And I start reading the story and I start, I, I see the byline and I think, oh my God, Jason Blair, like he was in Los Fresnos and he didn't call me. That was my first thought. A couple of hours later, I get a phone call from Jason Blair. I called her to see if I could stamp the problem out, and I told her the exact same thing I told my editors, that, you know, I must have read her story, but I don't remember reading her story. I can still remember the sweat, the kind of panic, the sense of the shaking. And he's like, you know, the question they have is a quote in the story that the daughter translated for me for the mother. And at that moment, at that moment, all my doubts were gone. At that moment, I knew Jason Blair had never been to Los Fresnos. At that moment, I realized Jason Blair had never interviewed Juanita Anguiano. That moment, I knew Jason Blair had never seen what he described in his story because Juanita Anguiano spoke English. And I thought if he had interviewed Juanita Anguiano, he would have known he didn't need a translator. <laughs> 